Okay, in these next couple of videos, we're going to focus on the different families of the periodic table. Uh, this first video will cover just a couple of families. You should be using the packet that I gave you in class um, called Families of Elements. And we're going to just go through each group. And we're not going to get through all the groups in one video, but we'll get a couple of groups in. The first group that we're going to focus on is group one. So under group on the first page, group one, the group name will be called alkali metals. And so we're talking about this orange column right here, not the hydrogen um, element that is in that column, but hydrogen is in its own category. We're talking about the orange group. This is called alkali metals, and here's how you spell it, A-L-K-A-L-I. We're talking about lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. These are just a couple of pictures of these metals. They're soft metals. Um, you can cut them with a dull knife. They're the most reactive metals because they have one valence. Now we talked about valence before with your atom model project, but a valence, valence, the definition of valence is going to be the number of electrons in the outermost orbital ring of the element, and that's going to be used in bonding. All of these um, alkali metals have one valence, meaning they're going to be extremely reactive and they are going to um, be sought after by other nonmetals to bond with. Um, a lot of uh, nonmetals want their one valence electrons, so they form a lot of bonds. Uh, they're not going to be found alone in nature because they're so reactive. They're generally going to be found in a compound. Um, so that's my second bullet. Uh, you're never going to find sodium alone because it's all of these elements are going to be highly reactive to water. And so that's one of my other bullet points. So you're never going to find them alone. They're always going to be in a compound. For instance, sodium is always going to be, um, or not always, but a lot of times it'll be with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Uh, they're very soft and shiny. Like I said before, uh, you see a picture of someone cutting a piece of sodium or potassium. They kind of look the same. They're usually stored in oil. Um, and the reason why is because they're so reactive to water, you have to store them in oil because they could react with the water in the air. Uh, with the humidity and they could react to the um, water in the air. And what they do is they actually take that H2O molecule and they break apart hydrogen from oxygen. The, this alkali metal will then bond with oxygen while hydrogen gets left alone and turns, you know, bonds with itself, it becomes a gas and hydrogen gas is very flammable. So when we watch these um, alkali metal um, explosions, we'll watch a video under this Brainiac alkali metal video in class. When you see the fire that comes from these reactions, it's because the alkali metal um, has bonded to the oxygen in the H2O water molecule, and it's left hydrogen by itself, and hydrogen is very flammable. So we have to store them in oil. All of these alkali metals are solids. Um, as we start getting further and further towards the right, those families are going to have a mixture of solids and gases. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, we'll talk about the triad. Tri means three. There's going to be three elements in this um, column that are going to form a triad. They kind of talked about it in the video we watched before um, holiday break, but lithium, sodium, and potassium form a triad. Um, and we'll talk about what they do in the brain and how lithium helps uh, restore the levels. You might already know this because of the video. And the last bullet point is who's popular. We'll talk about this in class. Um, we'll bring up the iPads, look at the periodic table app, but we'll also maybe experiment with sodium. And then I'll also show you uh, the metal videos. If you look at your um, note page, the location on the periodic table, these alkali metals are in group one, therefore they're in the first column all the way to the left. The elements in this um, column we already talked about, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Valence, we already discussed one. Uh, all metals, they're all solids. And the properties are very soft, silver in color. They're going to conduct electricity because they're metals. Um, they're also going to be pretty malleable. Um, they're going to be very shiny. We're going to take really, really dull knives, and we're going to be able to cut it. And you can see that they're very shiny underneath. So that is our second, or sorry, our first group in orange on my periodic table right now, that's the alkali metals. The second group, group two, 
are called the alkaline earth metals. That's going to be our yellow column in this particular periodic table. Alkaline earth metals are going to be group two. The location is going to be the second column. Over on the left, you see my picture down here on the bottom left of my screen. Uh, the elements in this group are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Um, let's see what I have in my bullet points. Um, they're not going to be as reactive as group one because of their valence. These guys are going to have two in their outermost rings, so they're going to have two valence. That's going to make them reactive, um, but not as reactive as group one. A lot of metals, will nonmetals will want to bond with them, especially if a nonmetal has six in their valence. The magic number is eight. If you can get eight in your outermost shell, then you can be what's called a happy atom. You could be like a noble gas where you're not going to react with any other elements. So group two has two in their valence, okay? A group like the oxygen group has six in their valence. Six plus two is eight. So anything in that oxygen group really loves group two because they can immediately bond one-to-one uh, -one ratio, bond with that group two, and um, fulfill their valence. They could also um, grab somebody from group one as well. They're not just uh, limited to grabbing someone from group two, but group two is very sought after. They have two valence. They're fairly hard, uh, gray-white, and they're good conductors of electricity because they're metals. They're going to be good conductors. They're going to be malleable. Uh, they're probably going to be pretty shiny. If you look at my magnesium picture, it's pretty shiny. Uh, magnesium is actually an essential element in your body, and we'll play. I, I have some magnesium to show you in class. We'll burn that. It burns very, very bright white. We use that in flash photography, like old school cameras, where they lit that powder on fire and it poofed, and they took a picture. Like early 1900s, that was magnesium powder. Um, we also use them in fireworks to produce that bright white light. Uh, let's see. They have a valence of two. I already told you that. And they're going to be all solids and all metals, all solids in this group as well. Calcium is another popular one in this group. Uh, we need calcium. It's an essential element, especially for our bones. And if you lack calcium in your diet, it could cause osteoporosis, um, which is a bone weakening. Um, let's see. Solids, metals, properties are going to be what metals have. Interesting and useful facts. Uh, like we said, uh, we have some some pretty essential elements in this group. Calcium and magnesium for, for sure are essential for your body. Um, beryllium, we, beryllium is used in a lot of like rocket um, housing. Um, some people did beryllium for their atom model projects, so we can ask them in class some fun facts about that. Um, radium. Let's see, radium was used in Rutherford's experiment, gold foil experiment, so we have talked about radium before as well. We're going to do a lab with alkaline earth metals when you come to class, so you'll get to see how they react to um, different compounds.